This is ABC 7 News at 11, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Good evening, I'm Haley Wilgus. Thank you for joining us. A Punta Gorda police officer is on administrative leave after being involved in a fatal shooting during a citizen training exercise. ABC 7's Ray Collins has more on this tragedy and what's being done to prevent something like this from happening in Sarasota. Ray. Yeah, Haley, very sad. It's a story making national news headlines and also forcing a new police policy in Punta Gorda. It happened Tuesday night at the Punta Gorda Police Department during a routine presentation. During a shoot, don't shoot role playing program, Officer Lee Cole's gun went off reportedly several times, hitting and killing Mary Knowlton of Punta Gorda. We're all just standing there thinking she's going to stand up in a minute. Knowlton's son said the family is devastated. I was just hysterical, you know, but I knew I had to keep my head, you know, as far as I got to. There's more than me involved here. My dad needs us to be strong. I was so, so sad and, and felt so bad for all the people that were involved because it's a tragic accident. Sarasota Police Chief Bernadette Tapino says they have a similar Citizens Police Academy, but there's no way, she says, a live bullet could ever be used with their so-called airsoft weapons. And it doesn't shoot projectiles like a gun, it shoots pellets. DePino gave us access to the department's simulator room where similar exercises are conducted. Deputy Chief Pat Robinson showed us the compact discs that are used to simulate anything from a verbal confrontation to an active shooter in a movie theater. And he also showed us a picture of the gun they use. So as you can see, it doesn't actually have a clip. It doesn't have an actual barrel, a threaded barrel. So the, the CO2 is loaded from that tank so it doesn't actually project any type of live round. So you couldn't even put a bullet in there if you wanted to. Obviously a huge tragedy for their department, and I'm sure hopefully that there's some lessons learned as it comes, as it moves forward. In fact, lessons have been learned. The Punta Gorda Police Department is changing its policy so real weapons won't be used in training, so a nightmare like this can never happen again. Knowlton's husband was there when it happened. They were married for 55 years. Mary was a librarian in Punta Gorda. They were originally from Minnesota, Haley. Such a tragedy. Yeah. Thank you, Ray. And we're learning more about the officer who killed Knowlton. Officer Lee Coel is involved in a lawsuit against the Punta Gorda Police Department. We see some dash cam video here of an incident in October. Officer Coel was training 25 year old Richard Schumacher, who was riding his bike. He eventually stopped in the driveway of a home. Moments later, that officer unleashed his canine and the dog attacked Schumacher. He was taken to the hospital, bloodied and handcuffed and stayed for 11 days. According to the police report, he received a warning citation for riding his bike without lights, but his attorney says there was no reason for the use of this canine. And now switching gears and heading over to Bob to take a look at our forecast. Well, Haley, a bit of a transitional day today. We did have a lot more sunshine around. There were some showers and storms kind of pinwheeling around this area of low pressure, which, by the way, keeps moving away. As this low pressure does move away, we're going to see it uh, again bring some rainfall into Louisiana and the lower Mississippi Valley. But for the most part, high pressure continues to build in. So we'll get back to the typical afternoon and evening variety of storms around this east to southeasterly wind flow on the sea breeze. Uh, still some lingering showers, uh, but for the most part, they're just about over. Some light rain occurring in the north end of uh, Anna Maria and some rain around here earlier near uh, Rotunda and Port Charlotte has since moved on. There's a little bit of light rain, rain near Holmes Beach, but it has been a fairly wet afternoon and evening with some uh, pretty impressive rainfall amounts near Parrish. Uh, just about three inches of rainfall there, just over an inch at Lakewood Ranch and 2.1 inches of rain in Port Charlotte. Notice the coastal locations didn't get much at all, just a little bit of a trace here and there. We'll have more on our weather forecast coming up in a few minutes. Haley. Thank you, Bob. Deputies have identified a man who died in an accidental drowning today in Manatee County. Deputies say 51 year old Andy Lewis Milton drowned around noon today. It happened in the intercoastal waterway just north of the Manatee Avenue Bridge. Melton was riding his bike over the bridge when his hat fell in the water. He went to retrieve it, but he did not make it back to shore. An FWC officer driving on the bridge tried to rescue him, but he was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. 
The first day of school in Manatee County is in the books, and many students were hitting the books tonight. Around 49,000 students and 2,700 teachers have returned for the 2016-2017 school year. They may be finishing up their homework and hopefully in bed already. There are 32 elementary schools, 11 middle schools, 7 high schools, and 11 charter schools in Manatee County. School officials say it was a successful first day back. The first day of school is going wonderfully well. Our buses uh, went off without a hitch early this morning, and many of our schools are checking in, saying everything's okay. Now that school is back in session, drivers are encouraged to be extra careful around school zones in the morning and afternoon. And straight ahead, Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan will be back with the official Suncoast forecast so you know what to expect at the bus stop in the morning. Plus, the numbers continue to rise. The Zika virus spreads in South Florida, and it could be making its way to the Suncoast. Plus, Tampa International Airport will start flights to Cuba in just a few weeks, but the future of the charter companies involved is up in the air. Need new windows? Buy direct from the factory. New South Window is having a sale. The more you buy, the more you save. Buy four windows, save 25%. Buy six windows, save 30%. Buy eight or more windows and save 35%. How? Because New South owns the factory and you cut out the middleman. Award-winning, energy-efficient windows and doors installed with a lifetime warranty. New South Windows are made in Florida for Florida homes by Florida workers. Visit NewSouthWindow.com or call now. Is your mop a dirty, disgusting mess? You need the Hurricane 360 Spin Mop System, the only mop and bucket that spins the dirt away. A system that cleans practically anything and everything with super absorbent microfiber. Dip it in the washer side and the mess releases into the bucket. Then place it in the dryer side and push on the pedal. You get a clean mop head that's practically dry and ready for more. And your hands will never again touch a dirty, disgusting mop. The heads are washable and reusable. Get the Hurricane 360 Spin Mop System for just two payments of $19.99. You'll also get a Sticky Buddy, the reusable sticky roller that picks up pet hair and lint and washes clean in seconds. You can take advantage of our two-for-one pick-it-up special and get a second spin mop set. Just pay additional shipping and fee. And we'll upgrade you to free priority handling. So don't wait. Order now. Call 1-800-394-1524 to get your Hurricane Spin Mop double offer. So hurry and call 1-800-394-1524. Call now. Since 1972, Sleep King has provided quality mattresses and accessories at the best discounted prices available. Top brands like Simmons, Sealy, Serta, Beautyrest, iComfort, and more. With available free delivery, free financing, and free setup and removal. For a comfortable night's sleep with same-day delivery, even if we have to carry it on our backs. Trust Sleep King of Sarasota. Buy it today. Sleep on it tonight. They're coming from Tampa, Fort Myers, even Orlando. They're coming from everywhere for the Sarasota Ford Promise. Our promise means a new car you'll love. If not, return it for one you do. At Sarasota Ford, we promise live market pricing. We monitor national pricing on our entire inventory so you get the best deal. In fact, we guarantee it. Bring us any competitor's ad and we'll beat it by at least $1,000. That's why they're coming from everywhere to Sarasota Ford, where 41 meets 301. SarasotaFord.com. Hurricane season is here, so when severe weather threatens, count on the official Sunco Storm Team at ABC7. We bring you storm warnings faster and with more detail than ever before. And track storms right down to your neighborhood. On air, online, and on your mobile device, turn to the official Sunco Storm Team at ABC7. We're here for you. Bob, we are shifting into our normal afternoon right. shower pattern. We are, and uh, some of those storms could be heavy, too. So look for the lightning to come back, because we really didn't get a lot of lightning True. with these storms yeah. over the past few days. But now it'll be back in full force, and especially on Friday and continuing mm -hmm. over into the weekend. Uh, I know a lot of folks didn't get a chance to get out last weekend. Right. They will this weekend, uh, as the sunshine will be around in much of the morning and early afternoon. That way is a webcam showing a little bit of sunshine just before sunset. But look at the different direction the clouds moving, one to the south and then to to the east and then a little bit to the north in the upper level cloudiness. We had several different frontal boundaries kind of approaching all at once and 
it was uh, interesting to see the storms move in all different directions uh, this afternoon. Well, the uh, sunshine was around this morning and a pretty good shot of this Ibis this morning. Uh, taking off at the Tom Bennett Park in Manatee County, just off of uh, the interstate there. Joanne sending this one in and another great shot of the storms moving in later this afternoon near Palm Air uh, right there by University and Alan getting this shot and sending it in as well to pics at mysuncoast.com. Well, the storms are for the most part over uh, for the west coast of Florida this evening. Uh, we had some showers and storms in the Gulf of Mexico. This is starting to weaken too, which is a good sign as that low pressure moves farther away as we showed you earlier in the newscast. And some light rainfall still lingering off uh, near Anna Maria as well as uh, the showers down near Rotunda and uh, actually Placida are now over as well. Some light rain still lingering at the airport. Dew point is at 74. The temperature is actually pretty warm, 81 degrees. We had a high today, a little bit above average, and a higher dew point temperature made it feel like 104 this afternoon at 3 o'clock. This morning's low was a little bit warmer than average. Our low as well, 2 degrees above it and 97 the record. No rain, just a trace of rain at the Sarasota Braden Airport. It's been kind of raining lightly out here at the studio uh, here at ABC 7 in downtown Sarasota. 77 in Jacksonville, 78 in Orlando. It's 84 now in Miami and 86 degrees in Key West. And around town, temperatures into the upper 70s to low 80s, 81 in Sarasota. The same in Sebring now. Avon Park at 80 degrees and 79. Northport, Inglewood, you're at 77. Braden at 78 degrees. So tonight, look for skies to clear. We'll have partly cloudy skies throughout the day tomorrow. And then showers and storms developing, according to this model, a little later in the afternoon and evening, pushing off toward the west coast late in the day. So we'll have a pretty good chance for some late afternoon and evening thunderstorms. Looks like it'll be okay for the commute and also for the uh, kid, uh, the children on the bus rides uh, to and uh, from school for tomorrow. But Friday, bigger storms expected and anticipated as we get more of a southeasterly component, and that will right up against that sea breeze front and really I think we'll have some a potential for some severe weather. Similar conditions played out on Saturday and Sunday. There's always that possibility with one or two lone storms during the summer months that they can become severe in nature. Well in the tropics all is quiet now, but it wasn't the case back in 2004 as we were watching the first uh, tropical storm named Charlie to move through the Caribbean and this was back on August 10th, 2004. It had just gotten its name on this day. It eventually hit three days later into Punta Gorda. That story well known as it tracked off through the Caribbean, went from a one to a four in less than a day and a half, really, as far as timing goes, and really rapidly intensified as it made its way toward Charlotte Harbor, uh, causing $13 billion worth of damage in the state of Florida and winds at 150 miles an hour, and there were 10 U.S. deaths, six in Charlotte County alone. Now, keep this in mind, the peak of the hurricane season coming up now into August and September, and we advise you to go to mysuncoast.com and check out the hurricane special there if you haven't already uh, to get prepared uh, for the heart of the season. Seas will be two feet or less, a light chop on the bays and inland waters. The water temperature now at 86 degrees, and UV index finally back into the high categories. Uh, next low tide will be at 1251, a high tide will be at 639 tomorrow morning. A few storms mainly offshore, otherwise partly cloudy skies, low temperatures close to seasonal averages, and then tomorrow rain chance at 40% for late day storms. A little bit better after or near the sunset, I should say, and a high near 90 degrees. The extended forecast calling for a good chance for showers and storms right on in through the weekend. Haley? Thank you, Bob. The number of Zika cases in the state of Florida, especially South Florida, is growing. The Florida Department of Health announcing the number of non-travel travel related cases at now at 22. There are 14 new cases in the state today. Seven are in Miami-Dade County, two in Bay County, two in Palm Beach, and then one each in Lake, St. Lucie, and Seminole. The department still believes the active transmissions are only taking place within one square mile in Miami-Dade. County. Tampa International Airport will begin flights to Cuba in just a few weeks, but they're already muscling out at least one local charter company. Cuba Travel Services will cease operations from Tampa. The future of the two other local charter companies, Island Travel and Tours and ABC Charters, remains unclear. ABC Charters says it has no plans to leave the Tampa market, but its future is up in the air after October 31st. That's because the Cuban government grants landing rights to charters in six months. Month increments and issues authorization three months in advance.
A man from Arkansas has been arrested for trying to enter Disney World with a gun and impersonating a police officer. The Orange County Sheriff's Office says Kevin Webb tried to enter Magic Kingdom Park with a firearm. An arrest affidavit says that Webb was randomly selected to go through a metal detector. When he was stopped for his gun, Webb told a guard he was an off-duty officer and displayed police identification. Webb was an officer in Arkansas but was terminated in 2013. For many, including area lawmakers, today's blistering report from the Justice Department on Baltimore police behavior is a validation of what many city residents say they have already felt. It's a long-standing pattern of unlawful stops, searches, and arrests, primarily of African Americans in the city's poorest neighborhoods. The Baltimore PD today promising reform. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez has the details. A federal investigation revealing blatant discrimination and systematic issues within the Baltimore Police Department. Finding officers routinely violated the constitutional rights of citizens, especially African Americans, made unlawful arrests, and regularly used excessive force. These violations have deeply eroded the mutual trust between BPD and the community it serves. Trust that is essential to effective policing as well as to officer and public safety. The Department of Justice launching the investigation after an unarmed black man, Freddie Gray, died last year from injuries suffered while in police custody. The case, which sparked protests and rioting in Baltimore, leading investigators to spend more than a year reviewing complaints about the police department, riding along with officers, and interviewing residents. Everyone agreed that the Baltimore Police Department needs sustainable reform. Baltimore City officials agreeing to a court order to overhaul its police department and its policies. Much work remains to be done and change will not happen overnight. But our efforts have started the necessary process of change and reform in Baltimore. This following a similar overhaul of the police department in Ferguson, Missouri, after the DOJ found some of the same discriminatory practices in place there. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, New York. Thank you, Marcy. The Trump campaign is on the defensive again, and there is also more email trouble for Hillary Clinton. Donald Trump and his campaign insist that he was not suggesting his supporters use violence against Hillary Clinton, but his comment about the Second Amendment is not dying down. Team Trump insists that they were talking about how voters could mobilize to keep Clinton out of office. On Good Morning America, former New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani defended Trump. We know Donald Trump is not particularly indirect. If Donald Trump was going to say something like that, he'd say something like that. New emails released by the conservative group Judicial Watch show what appears to be a senior staffer for the Clinton Foundation asking for favors from the State Department while Clinton was secretary. A man using giant suction cups and a rope to scale the 58-story Trump Tower in New York has been arrested. He made it to the 21st floor before police pulled him inside the building. His identity, identity and motives were not immediately clear as he slowly pulled his way up the glass structure. There he is being pulled in by police. They arrived at the scene around 4 p.m. They broke some windows, they raised a ladder, and even cut through a vent to try to stop him. They also set up two airbags below the climber. He told police he intended to make it to the top. The tower is Donald Trump's official residence and he is being evaluated at a mental hospital. Sports is next, but first, here's Jimmy Kimmel. Really look at it. You meet someone who you venerate. Yes. What do you say? What's up? I don't know. <laughs> When the Suncoast matters most, no one covers it like ABC7. There's a lot of excitement here. We're standing right where those Florida delegates will sit. I talked to some Suncoast delegates. We were right in the thick of that. ABC7 News. We're here for you, Suncoast. At Sunset Subaru in Sarasota, it's all about getting more for your money. More years, more miles, more 2016 IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus winners than any other brand. Stop by to see our new state-of-the-art showroom today, and you can lease the most award-winning small SUV on the planet, a new 2016 Subaru Forester, for just $2.29 a month, complimentary maintenance included, at Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. Get more for your money. Go to Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. Just because someone grows older, does that mean they have to grow apart from their friends or from the things they love to do? With Right at Home, it doesn't. 
Right at Home's professional team thoughtfully selects caregivers to help with personal care, housekeeping, meals, and most of all, staying engaged in life. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Are you ready to go? Oh, I sure am. We can provide the right care right at home. Attention, this is an important message for anyone who had an IVC filter placed to prevent blood clots from traveling to their heart or lungs. Did your IVC filter move, break, or cause organ damage? The FDA warns that IVC filters may cause serious complications, such as heart or lung damage, internal bleeding, even death. If you or a loved one suffered serious complications, call IVC Filter Helpline now. You may be entitled to compensation. IVC filters are designed to prevent blood clots. If your IVC filter moved or broke and you suffered heart or lung damage internal bleeding or if a loved one died as a result call ivc filter helpline today our network of experienced attorneys is ready to fight for you you'll pay nothing unless there's a recovery in your favor call today for a free confidential consultation don't fight this alone call ivc filter helpline now Please call 800-897-6764 that is 800-897-6764 whether you're a homeowner looking for a professional installation or a contractor looking for top quality products, Sarasota Glass & Mirror can meet your every need. For 42 years, Sarasota Glass & Mirror has been the area's premier supplier and installer of quality glass products for your home or business. As an authorized PGT WinGuard dealer, we know how to protect your home. With everything from the PGT WinGuard impact-resistant windows and doors to shower enclosures and decorative mirrors, the Sarasota Glass & Mirror team has the knowledge to tackle any project. It's Lincoln Summer Sales Event here at Alex Karras Lincoln. Drive a brand new 2017 Lincoln MKZ for only $299 per month or a 2016 Lincoln MKX, Lincoln's premium sports utility vehicle for $339 per month. We also have a great selection of certified pre-owned vehicles. Drive with the confidence of a six-year, 100,000-mile comprehensive warranty and complimentary roadside assistance. Alex Karras Lincoln, family-owned and operated and winner of the prestigious 2015 President's Award. We are located two miles north of the Sarasota Bradenton Airport on US-41. Now, sports. A big win for the Rays last night and a big loss for Tampa Bay tonight in Toronto. The Blue Jays got on the board in the first with three runs and they got two more in the second. Things did not go as smoothly for Tampa Bay. No runs for the Rays at all this game. Toronto takes this one seven to zip. They will have tomorrow to rest and then they will be on to play the Yankees in New York on Friday. High school football season is almost here, and today we'll take a look at the Braden River Pirates. They haven't lost a regular season game since 2013, but as ABC 7's Don Brennan tells us, they did lose a host of talent to Division I colleges. The Braden River Pirates have gone from being a turnstile for coaches to two straight undefeated regular seasons with some continuity under Kurt Bradley. To go from one and nine to where thirteen and one, where we finished last year, was a huge turnover, a turnaround, and you know to uh, to lose that group of guys that really laid the groundwork. You know we need these guys to step in and understand that nothing's given to them. You know everything's earned. As only a nose tackle could be, Daquan McCobb is actually excited for the hard work ahead to keep the Pirates from going from heroes to zeros this season. I highly doubt that we're going to be a one shot one. It's going to be fun because we have a lot of new things learning. We have a lot of things to cover, so it's just going to make us like work harder and be better at what we do. McCobb and middle linebacker Noah Arce are core players on a defense that returns a lot of its talent, but they can see that the offense is putting in the hours to catch up. We got a lot of good young talent coming in this year. We're just rebuilding a little bit, but we had picked up a couple of key players on the offseason. Like we got Louie from uh, IMG Academy, and he's going to be huge for us this year, too. Louie from IMG is Louie Colosimo from Connecticut via IMG. The former Staples record quarterback will team up with a recovering running back to get that offense going again. Raymond Thomas is back uh, full speed. Looks great. Um, you know, obviously going to limit his touches early on and keep him healthy down the stretch. The Pirates won't live in the past, but that loss in the state semifinal game will change their future. It makes you that much hungrier, you know. You get there and it got close, but you know, not winning that game against St. Thomas just is extra motivation for me. I've never been one to quit. We came that close and we fell short, and that hurt a lot, and that put a chip on our shoulder to make us play better. With the Braden River Pirates, I'm Don Brennan for your Suncoast Sports.
Best of luck to them. Longtime ESPN anchor John Saunders has died. Saunders was a fixture on ESPN programming for 30 years. ESPN's Hannah Storm announced the news of his death on air today. His cause of death was not immediately known. Saunders is survived by his wife and two daughters. He was 61. That's a look at sports. We'll have tonight's lotto numbers straight ahead. The all new MySunCoast.com. Just another way we're here for you. A message from the Pulaski Law Firm. You started there right out of high school, learned your trade and did it well. And the asbestos you handled, well, that was just part of the job. If you worked in the trades and were diagnosed with mesothelioma, get the best care available, then call us. You may be entitled to financial compensation without ever going to court. Call 800-236-4994 and see how we can help. Mesothelioma, don't fight it alone. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed. Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. U.S. Med has great news for anyone living with diabetes. If you have Medicare, private insurance, or prescription drug coverage, U.S. Med will ship a new glucose meter right to your home. And shipping is free. My new meter uses only a speck of blood, so it's less painful than my previous meter. If you have Medicare, private insurance, or prescription drug coverage, you're covered with U.S. Med. We're welcoming new patients, even if your current provider can't supply you anymore. I don't even have to test on my fingers anymore. I can test on my hand or forearms, and it's more accurate than my old meter. So call U.S. Med today, and you'll have a choice of two great meters. One that actually speaks your results, or a meter so small it fits in the bottle of strips. Act now, and U.S. Med will include a free prescription discount card. We'll also send you a free diabetes cookbook. This is your opportunity. So call U.S. Med today. You'll be glad you did. They say good things come to those that wait. Well, you've waited long enough. You deserve to feel fabulous in your fashionable new Fiat 500X from Alfa Romeo Fiat in Sarasota. Boldly innovative, seductively stylish. Fiat gives you everything you'd expect from a capable utility vehicle, like a spacious interior and advanced safety systems, designed and built like a sexy little sportster. Don't wait any longer. You deserve to feel fabulous. Get a new Fiat at Alfa Romeo Fiat of Sarasota. Come uncork your inner artist at Painting with a Twist. Bring your favorite bottle of wine and appetizers and enjoy an evening out with friends to celebrate any special occasion. It's perfect for a girl's night out, birthday parties, or a fun date night. Painting with a Twist offers two or three hour classes that are instructed by local artists and there is no experience required. We now have two convenient locations in Sarasota and Bradenton. Visit our website to view our calendar and schedule your next party today. It's a tradition most of us have taken part in, first day of school photos. So here are some of our favorites from our viewers. Jerry Cook's son had his first day of second grade at Prine Elementary. Desiree Hanwright's daughter started first grade today. Angel Trichler has a new second and fourth grader this year. Tim Curry has a kindergartner, a second grader, and a fourth grader. And then check out this fourth grader. It's his first day at Stewart Elementary. And it is Shauna Doherty's little girl's first day of third grade. We're a little off on the photo. Right. So sorry if I read your name and it wasn't the right photo, but we love and we saw Emma on Facebook. 
yeah, for her first day of it, a, a lot of like kid there. up there at uh, Stewart Elementary. That's the school Emma goes to, yeah. and, and I know him too. That was his first well, day cool. in fourth grade. Yes, so congratulations and good luck to all the students out there. I'm sure they're all in bed now, but uh, I hope they are. Yeah, I hope they are. Well, before we up. go, one more thing: a group of volunteers in Connecticut recently rolled out the animal ambulance. The service is run by the Emergency Animal Response Services team. The owner says they respond to everything from fires to animals that need to be rescued, like injured hawks. Animals have just have always been a very big passion of mine. And um, like I said, this, this is something that fills a, a niche that didn't really ever exist. And I think, you know, for me personally, to be able to provide that back is great. The Winsky says they respond to about 12 calls a month and the service is free. They do run strictly on donations and we have something similar around here for right. animals in need so Absolutely. it's very cool uh very cool is the fact that we're back to some sunshine nice. now for the people that are Definitely. visiting i uh, look for a lot of that tomorrow morning and uh, throughout most of the afternoon showers and storms scattered about late in the day okay so maybe at the as you're heading back from school might right. need an umbrella might. so just pack that just in case we'll see you tomorrow have a wonderful evening